Welcome to our Election 2016 Forum, organized by the League of Women Voters of Greater Las Cruces. I'm Fred Martino. Today we focus on New Mexico Senate District 37 with Democrat Bill Souls and Republican Seal Levitino. Candidates will have one minute to respond to each question. There will be no follow-up questions and no rebuttals, so we ask the candidates to offer their position and refrain from commenting on their opponents. The questions were submitted to the league by the public. We ask the studio audience to refrain from any noise during the forum. We'll alternate throughout the half hour, and the first response was chosen by a coin toss. I'm joined by Gwen Hansen, president of the league, and she has our first question. And the first question is for you, Bill. Do you support physician assistance in dying? Explain. I absolutely support that. I think uh, we need to very much, we need to make sure that we treat our elderly people in a very humane way. Uh, years ago, I had a dog that died and I was very pleased that I could take my dog when he was very sick to the vet and have him euthanized in a very humane way. And I think we need to have that same kind of thing in New Mexico so that people who do not have a good quality of life are able to make a choice for themselves that this is a good and dignified way of of leaving this planet. And I think that's something that we need to have. I know it's a hot topic in New Mexico, and I know it's something that is brought up in the legislature, but yes, I am supportive of that. Thank you. Seal? I don't support it. Um, there is a Hippocratic oath that physicians take when they graduate. And part of that oath is to protect the life of the patient that they're taking care of. Dignity is very important, in, especially in end of life issues. But, and there are many, many ways that a person who is suffering, who doesn't want to go on any longer, can, can end their life with dignity without, um, without having a physician or another health care provider involved in that decision making in, in the act. Um, so I would be opposed to that. Okay. Seal, we'll begin with you for our second question. Do you support allowing voters to decide on the legal sale of recreational marijuana in New Mexico? Yeah, I do. I think that would be an excellent um, issue to have on the ballot for the public to decide. Um, I think it's a, it's a, medical marijuana I think is critical to care and I absolutely support medical marijuana. I remember as a nurse back in New York um, in the mid 70s, uh, we had a patient who had come back from Vietnam and uh, was suffering from the effects of Agent Orange. And the only way he could keep food down was by having medical marijuana and this was in the mid 70s. And his physician um, got it for him and we were allowed to let him have that in the hospital. And this was, as I said, in the mid 70s. And it made such a difference in that young man's life. Um, so I absolutely support medical marijuana. I would leave it up to the public to decide whether it became uh, legal recreationally. Okay, Bill. I, we agree with this, I think, very much. And New Mexico does have a good medical marijuana program. Currently, we have some problems with that in that we are not supporting the number of patients. But the question really was about recreational marijuana. And I think we have some very good models in Colorado that, and Washington, where it is working very effectively and actually has been a very good financial boom to their economies there. Uh, certainly, I think in New Mexico, we should put that to the voters to decide whether we have recreational marijuana in New Mexico. I think it's changing across the country, and I think New Mexico has an opportunity to get out in front of this and actually use it to our benefit by taxing it and having it legal in the state. And certainly that would be something that I think the voters should be allowed to vote on. Thank you. The third question is for you, Bill. How would you provide incentives for businesses to relocate to our state, if any? Thank you. And in New Mexico, we already have a number of incentives for businesses to relocate to New Mexico. The LIDA funds and JTIP both provide some substantial amount of monies to relocate for businesses coming here, provided that they create jobs. Uh, we also have some high wage job credits, tax credits. So far, those have been had limited success within the state of New Mexico. We certainly need to look and make sure that the funds that we are providing for that are actually providing jobs, creating jobs in the state, bringing companies in. 
I think a good example of one where it was not effective was when we were in the running for the Tesla Corporation coming in. And lots of people got very excited about that. But in reality, Tesla, we were just the bait for Tesla for other states. We were never actually in the running for that. And we need to make sure that we're not giving away all the tax money, hoping that we have a big company coming in. Thank you. I think one of the biggest incentives we can give is not financial. And that is having a state that is business friendly, that encourages the type of, of atmosphere that, and, and quality of life issues that are important to businesses. Um, I certainly know as a realtor working with many, many people who are thinking of relocating to this area, um, either with their companies or individually, uh, the quality of life issues are, are in many ways much more important than the incentives are. Um, the incentives are important, I'm not saying they're not, but they're not, they're not the most important thing. People are looking for, uh, as I said, quality of life issues. They're looking for um, a good education system. They're looking for good health care. They're looking for um, uh, safe neighborhoods. They're looking for uh, low taxes. Um, so there's lots of other issues that, that make up the decision making when a company or individuals are thinking of moving to this area. And our next question, Seal, will allow you to expand on this. What should the state legislature do to improve the economy in New Mexico? It's going to take a lot more than a minute to go through that. <laughs> um, I think some of, the, some of the, as I said, some of the issues are um, improving our educational system, um, improving our access to health care. Um, we are a very, at least here, we're a very safe community. We, we are blessed with a great um, uh, police force and, and we're, we live in an area that is very comfortable. Um, but it's interesting talking to people who are thinking of coming here from other areas. Um, the fact that we're on the border scares people and we're constantly saying, no, this is a safe community, this is a safe state. Uh, you don't have to worry about those things. So um, the quality of life issues are, are important for the state to recognize as important issues to, to attract businesses to New Mexico. Okay, Bill. I think the things that the legislature can do to improve the economy really require a long-term vision. We need to start making investments in our people. And that means investments in early childhood education. I think it means investments in K-12 education. It's investments in our universities. The investments in early childhood improve the education program for all, which as uh, my opponent indicated, is part of the quality of life and make sure that children are well prepared. And certainly investments in K-12 education ensure that we have a qualified workforce when businesses are looking to move here, that improves the economy as well. Our universities are hubs for innovation. They have entrepreneurs who are ready to start companies. When we cut programs at the universities, we are cutting the investments in the future of the state of New Mexico. New Mexico needs to diversify away from the oil and gas industry into lots of other areas so that we are not dependent on one, which is what has been tanking our economy. Bill. Next question. Do you support universal preschool education? And if so, how would you bring it about? Thank you for that question. I absolutely support universal preschool education. All of the evidence is very, very clear. Children make all of the neural connections in the first three years of their life. The rest of their learning is trimming, modifying, and adjusting those neural connections. If children don't have a quality preschool program, quality early childhood education programs, they never make those neural connections and nothing we do in education is going to allow them to reach their full potential. It's an important investment that New Mexico needs to make in its future. We have a couple of ways of doing that. When I first got in the legislature, I was not in favor of tapping into the permanent fund. I did not think we should be using that for recurring kinds of costs. But I got to the legislature and found out there was not a whole lot of an emphasis on finding another funding source. And so I've changed. I think we need to tap into the permanent fund, take a small portion of that, and fund education for the long-term future of New Mexico. Thank you. Seal. Thanks. 
Um, this, is a, this is an issue where we do uh, ha have different opinions. Um, I don't support universal uh, early childhood um, unless I can see some really strong indicators that it works. It, it hasn't. Uh, there, are not a, there aren't very few, if any, uh, studies that really show that early childhood education um, works, um, especially in this state. Um, I think there are other ways to address the issues that are, uh, that are important. Um, I am absolutely opposed to invading the permanent fund. Um, it's called a permanent fund for a reason. It's not a rainy day fund. Um, I think there are other ways that we can, we can uh, support our education system. It appears that the budgets are going to be cut. Um, and we're going to have to come up with some creative ways to deal with that. Um, but I don't, think in, I don't think invading the permanent fund is the way to do it. Okay. Next question, uh, we begin with you, Seal. How would you improve access to health care, especially mental health care in the state? Oof. We have a real crisis here in mental health. Um, we don't have the providers. Uh, we don't have um, the facilities. Uh, especially in this area, uh, we have we have three um, facilities that are basically uh, not functioning. We have the fifth floor at Memorial Medical Center with empty beds. We have uh, the Mesilla Valley Hospital with empty beds. We have a triage center that was built in the county a few years ago that is fully furnished, and the doors have never been opened. Um, one of the biggest problems is getting the providers. We can have all the facilities in the world, but if we can't attract the providers, we're stuck. Um, and that's an issue that the legislature is going to have to address. How do we attract mental health nurses, psychologists, physicians? And that's a question that is a serious issue that we're going to have to deal with. Bill? Thank you for that question, and that's something that's been very frustrating being in the legislature in that a couple of years ago, we had a functioning behavioral health system in New Mexico, and it was totally dismantled by some actions of the governor. And as a result, those people who have, many were in crisis have not had access to good behavioral mental health, other kinds of mental health, and it's been very difficult to get those back up and running once they have been dismantled as they were. A couple of things that are bright spots that are coming is the new Burrell College here in part of New Mexico State University that one of the focuses that it is bringing in is to train people in behavioral and mental health and trying to provide more of those. Now that's going to be three or four years down the road before those students are out doing their residencies, but they are already setting those up around the southern part of New Mexico in order to help ensure that patients do have access to behavioral and mental health. Bill, how would you allocate increasingly scarce water resources? Thank you. I thought there was going to be a little more to that question. It's very <laughs> nice and short. Uh, New Mexico is a desert. We get our water from Colorado, and therefore we need to be very careful that we are using water and reusing water when we can and not mining water to where it's not usable afterwards. And that's a very difficult thing. Uh, this valley has always been irrigated by the Rio Grande flowing through it and has kept it very green, but with more and more users requesting water, it makes it very difficult. Every year I've been in the legislature on the Conservation Committee, we have talked about water and water issues. And every time we get close to people starting to agree, some other group says, wait a minute, now you're talking about cutting my water issues. And then usually it starts to rain and everybody hopes that it continues to rain and we've done nothing. And that's a real frustration within the state that we have serious water issues and everybody is afraid to actually deal with them and doing nothing is still doing something. Mm. Thank you. See you. Um, I, I agree with Bill primarily on, the, on those issues. Um, a lot of it is education and this is something that we've certainly done on the city, on the city level is try to educate our water users to um, be more conservative, uh, to be sensitive to the fact that uh, 
uh, we can't waste water, not living in the desert, not living here. Um, it would be nice if we could win the suit that we have with, with Texas. Um, that would be helpful. But I think a lot of it is just education and educating the people who, who live here that um, our water resources are limited and they're precious and that we have to be ever mindful of, of how much we're using. Seal, our next question beginning with you. Should the state promote renewable energy? If so, how? Renewable energy here is a no-brainer, or at least it should be. Um, I'm a big supporter of, of solar energy. My husband and I have panels on our house. Uh, we love getting the checks from El Paso Electric every month. Um, and um, I don't support, um, I don't support the, and I'm blocking the word, the government underwriting the cost of it, uh, subsidizing it. Um, I think businesses need to stand on their own and either make it or break it based on, on you know, um, how good they do, how well they perform. Um, but I think there can be, um, again, a lot of it is education. One of the problems that we have in this area, and we've talked about this in the city, is that the people who could benefit from it, from it the most can't afford it, even with the incentives. So how do we, how do, we do that? Many of them live in, in homes uh, that cannot be converted. Okay, we have time, unfortunately. Ben. <laughs> in many ways, I think we agree. I also have solar panels on my house. I believe that in New Mexico, we sit on a golden opportunity that we should be putting panels on every government building. We should be putting panels on every school. We should be pumping electrons onto the Western grid all day long. And that should be the economic health of the future or of our state. It's an investment in our future because if we have cheap energy that we can offer to consumers, if we can offer to businesses in the form of renewable energy, businesses will flock here. That is one of their largest expenses. And we need to be making investments as a state, as a local community, as individuals in renewable energy because it is the future. The fossil industry is no longer going to be in our future. It will be a transition in to renewables and we can be the leaders in that area and we need to start doing that now and pumping electrons onto the grid. Thank you. Okay, Bill, next question. What is the future of the Affordable Care Act in New Mexico? What are your concerns about its funding? Thank you for that question. The Affordable Care Act in New Mexico has actually been very good in that we have been able to put 30 to 40 percent more people onto insurance, that is reduced costs for hospitals, it has gotten more people health care, it has reduced the number of people going into emergency rooms for routine health care. So it has been very good. The federal government has initially covered the entire cost of expansion. It has caused us some problems in that as it moves on, the state needs to pick up some larger portions of that. And as we all know, the budgets in the state are very tight or, or worse than that. And that is an area we must make sure that we continue to fund. The, there are some inequities as to how it's being uh, promulgated across the state uh, with some of the insurance companies opting out of it because there's not enough profit for them to be made because more high risk people have been put onto the insurances and not enough young healthy people that, to keep it all solvent. Seal? Thank you. Uh, we have a we have a healthcare system that is on the verge of collapse. Um, in this state, in particular, uh, it is very difficult. As as Bill alluded to, we've had um, United Healthcare, we've had Presbyterian, and and now we've heard that uh, Aetna is is pulling out of the state. Um, this fiscal year, uh, the federal government will no longer be underwriting 100% of the Medicaid expansion. Uh, expansion. Um, that's going to cost just this year the taxpayers over $44 million just to fill the gap. Over the next five years, that total just to cover the gap between what the government was, the federal government was paying and the state will have to take over is going to be $778 million that the state must see in new revenue just to cover the gap. 
we've got a huge economic crisis looming. Seal, our next question, uh, beginning with you, are you in favor of a professional legislature with legislators being paid a salary? I am, but I'm also in favor of seeing the legislative session uh, lengthened. Um, when we moved here, I thought, wow, we've moved to a state that has a citizen legislature. We don't. We have a volunteer legislature because there's an awful lot of good people out there that can't afford to, to serve who would like to. Um, I would very much like to see the legislature paid, the legislators paid, but I also think that we are no longer a, a state of 200,000 people, mostly farmers. Uh, we've become much more sophisticated, it's much more complicated, and 30 and 60 days is simply not enough time to really do a good job. Bill. Thank you, and as someone who's serving in the legislature, I don't find the pay to be a problem for me personally. I do see that it tends to reduce the number of women who are in the legislature, it tends to reduce the number of minorities who serve in the legislature, and more it reduces the number of working people who serve in the legislature. We have lots of lawyers, we have lots of farmers and ranchers, and we have lots of business owners, but the worker is woefully underrepresented there, and I don't think that provides for for good representation. And I think if it was paid that that would open it up for some other people that typically are not legislators to feel that they have an opportunity to run. Thank you. Bill. What ideas do you have for diversifying New Mexico's economy? Thank you. Um, lots of that we talked about a little bit earlier is one, we need to take our foot off the brake on renewable energy and we need to go with that full force. Uh, we should be pumping energy onto the Western grid, and by the same token, we ought to be able to provide for businesses who want to relocate here very cheap renewable energy to run their businesses on. We also need to look at ways of what New Mexico does well. And for instance, we need to expand areas such as industrial hemp. Industrial hemp is a product at a crop. It would support our farmers and ranchers, and it also provides lots of other spin-off industries and small industry. The worst thing that we've got is we are a one energy producing state and it kills our budget with the fluctuations up and down. And we need to get to more diversity. We need to rely on our universities to, for their entrepreneurial and startup and spin-offs from their research. Thank you. Bill. It's interesting, I've attended two economic summits um, this year, um, and it was interesting, Some of the one of the presenters was the head of the uh, Dallas office of the Federal Reserve, the other presenter was the national senior uh, economic advisor for Wells Fargo, and um, they pointed out very many of the same things. Um, we rank last in child well-being. We rank last, we're, we have the highest poverty rate, we have the highest high school dropout rate. Uh, 27 of our 33 counties are losing population. Uh, our state's GDP lags behind our five neighboring states. We need to be, as I said earlier, much more business friendly. We need to reduce taxes, both personal income taxes and corporate taxes. Um, and we need to make sure that businesses know that when they come here, they will have a ready and willing workforce. Okay, final question of the evening, and we begin with you, Seal. Wow. This is a, a short-term challenge uh, for the state of New Mexico. We have uh, a question from our studio audience. Uh, how are the candidates uh, suggesting that New Mexico balance the budget for the next three years considering our deficits? That's a good question, and it's a tough question. Um, it's going to take a lot of creative ideas. I, I don't think that we can lean on the same old answers. Uh, there is no way we can raise taxes high enough to cover the, to cover the deficit. It's interesting. Bill was there um, a few weeks ago. The, the Legislative Jobs Council was down here and there were a number of legislators from all over the state who attended that. And it was really interesting to go from table to table and listen to the conversations because the conversations were all about 
how are we going to raise taxes? What are we going to raise taxes on universally at every table? And there's no way we can raise taxes enough to cover the enormous deficit that we're finding ourselves in. We've got to get out of that mindset and really start looking at much more creative ideas. Bill. I actually think there are some things that we can do. Uh, one of them is certainly we need to look at all of the tax credits that we have given away over the last five to 10 years. And we need to have a comprehensive look at the entire taxing budget. Uh, that means what have we given away? How has that worked? Which things have actually created jobs? What hasn't created jobs? We also need to make sure that we are making investments in the specific areas that have created jobs and have improved the economy. And those include the film industry, the solar energy industry, uh, we, the beer and wine industry is doing well, tourism is doing very well. And we need to make sure that there are investments in those areas and we need to invest in our universities because they are the ones that are going to create jobs create new companies that are New Mexico based companies. But more than anything, we need to make sure that everything is on the table, that we discuss all of the options and come up with something that works well without amputating everything. Bill Soule, Seal Levitino, <laughs> thank you so much for sharing this half hour with us today. We really appreciate it. Our pleasure. Thank you. And thank you at home. You make in-depth journalism possible with your donations to KRWG. And thanks to the League of Women Voters, we wouldn't be able to do it without you. Thank okay. you, Fred. Have a great week.